Welcome to Believer's Channel 2. I'm Pastor Russ, and today I'm going to be talking about the burdensome stone. You don't want to miss this. Also, stay all the way to the end because at the end we give you a blessing. We bless you. And uh, if you know anything at all about blessings and curses, you always want to be blessed. And uh, we just ask you to do that. And now I'd like to get into the into the story of the burdensome stone and where it came from. You know, it's throughout the Bible. It talks about Israel and Jerusalem becoming a, a burdensome stone to the world and so on. And uh, in the New Testament, it's in Matthew 24, 15 through 21. And you can find it in other gospels too. But the one I like the most is in Zechariah. Zechariah, actually two and three, really describes uh, what the burdens of stone represents. And I can tell you a little more past that, but let's get into it right now and see what we can do. Zechariah 12.2 says, Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people throughout the world, when they shall be in the, in the siege, both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day I will make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. I know that sounds like a little bit of gibberish, but I want to tell you it says a lot. Number one, the Bible declares that if you bless Israel, God will bless you. And if you curse Israel, God's really going to curse you. So, in a way, we're talking about the same thing in these chapters. The burdens of stone. He's saying, if you come against Israel, I'm going to make Israel a burdensome stone. I'm going to make it so heavy that you're not going to be able to carry it. And whatever you do to Israel is going to come back on you. And all that comes from a... Um, it, comes, it comes from like a sport. Uh, back in them days, and even today, in Saudi Arabia and Iran, the, yen, the young men will pick up huge stones to show their strength, how strong they are, how much of a man they've become. And they'll pick it up and put it above their heads. Some even put it on their head and put their hands out in front of them and clasp them. Now these stones are extremely heavy. And this is what... Uh, Zechariah and Jesus, this is what they're talking about, is the weight of that stone. And if you come against Israel in any way, manner, or form, you're going to be carrying the weight of that stone, and it gets heavy. So like any big stone, the further you walk with it, the heavier it gets. And in this case, quite often what would happen, they would put the stone above their head, and it would become extremely heavy and they would lose it, they'd come down, beat them in the head, and cut their body up, because the stone wasn't only big, it was sharp in places. So it, it really hurt their bodies and so on. And this is what they're referring to. I'm going to make Jerusalem a heavy, a burdensome stone. And he's referring to the damage that that stone causes when it comes against you when the weight becomes too heavy. Also further down in that chapter, he talks about uh, horses, which today would be tanks, and jeeps and whatever, uh, and their riders, the, the soldiers, those that come against Israel. What he's gonna do is he's gonna confuse them. He's, he's gonna make their minds uh, get all mixed up and confused to where they shoot each other instead of shooting at the Jews. This wouldn't be the first time in the Bible he's done that. So God will do anything to save the Jews. So if I was these other countries, I'd give it up right now. It, it just isn't worth it. You're not going to win. And uh, the last time... Jerusalem was in the hands of the Muslims was in before 1967. 
1967, they had a war and Jerusalem changed hands. It went from the Muslims to the Jews. So this is God putting things together the way he wants them. And then we have President Trump actually fulfill, fulfill prophecy uh, by declaring Israel, the cap or Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. And when he did that, he fulfilled prophecy and he moved our embassy to Jerusalem. So God has put all this together. He's, he's, he's letting the world know, uh, these are my people. And Jerusalem means a lot to me. It's, it's the capital. And if you come against it, it's all going to come back on you. No matter what you do to Israel, it will come back on you. Just like that big stone that you held up and it got really heavy and it fell on your head. That's exactly what we're talking about. So the analogy that Jesus and Zechariah used is perfect. Because when you hold something up that heavy, it just keeps getting heavier. It will eventually fall back on you. Always pray for the peace of Jerusalem and the peace of Israel. The Jewish people are great people. God the Father protects them to no end. And praying for him, he blesses you and do that. When you pray for a Jew, you get blessed. There's nothing greater than getting blessed by God. He will show you favor in every aspect of your life. So I'm asking you here today, if you don't know Jesus and you want to get to know him, you want to be a part of his kingdom, just say this little prayer then, because it's a sinner's prayer. You have to accept Jesus before you can get into the kingdom. By saying the sinner's prayer, you become part of that kingdom. Say, Father God, I'm a sinner. I've sinned against you. I've sinned against myself. I believe what Jesus did on the cross was for me. And he shed his blood that I would be washed clean. I ask right now that you forgive me for my sins and accept me into your kingdom. In Yeshua Jesus' name, Amen. Now, if you said that prayer, all your sins are behind you. You're a new man. You're washed clean. So go forward. Go forward expecting to have a wonderful relationship with the living God. Lord God, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Now, I want to bless you. May God bless you. May he keep you. And may his face shine upon you. In Yeshua, Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, you have a wonderful day. And God bless now.